Let me ask you about how, how much the pandemic has changed the business. How, what's been the biggest change, do you think, in the way that IKEA operates as a result of going through, operating through a pandemic? I'm guessing that it's to do with your online operations, but, but you tell me. Yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, two things from the consumer side. Life at home was important, and today and after the pandemic, it's even more relevant than ever before. So that's why I care vision to create a better life for the many people who very well in the current context. From the business point of view, uh, we decided to make IKEA more accessible, affordable, and sustainable. And this is the biggest change that we are uh, making in IKEA. At the same time, of course, as like you say, we invested heavily in the uh, business transformation, in the omni-channel transformation, and this has proven to be a formula for success over the, the last year. And lastly, we decided to accelerate our investment in climate positive uh, in order to reach our goal in climate positive before 2030. So all in all, the agenda is about more omnichannel, more sustainability, and more affordability. Good morning, Joventio. You talk about you know, the, the move towards more climate friendly, more sustainability. You plan to be climate positive by 2030. What is the biggest single contribution in terms of your climate output over the next nine years? Yeah, the important thing in the, in the climate agenda is to be very determined to measure uh, the entire footprint from an end to end perspective. That's why we call our science based target for scope one, two, and three. And the three is quite important, actually. And then it, by doing all this mapping, you can take actions from raw materials to the end of life. And the important thing is not only the commitment by 2030, it's also about taking actions in the here and now. For example, we decided that by 2020, we should produce more energy renewable than the energy we consume, and today is 130 percent. We decided by 2025, all the last mile delivery will be done with EV vehicles, and today we are already 100 percent in Shanghai, in Amsterdam, and 100 percent next month in, in, in Vienna, and 22 countries are actually uh, having a strong plan. Then is the, the food, for example. We are famous by the, for the meatballs, but now we are working with the plant balls. And the plant balls, it is a 96% less footprint than the traditional one. So all in all, from the raw material to become uh, renewable and recycled to the end of life, uh, and uh, it's all the action that we are taking. OK, so those are some of the actions you're taking. When your CEO recently spoke to one of our colleagues, uh, he talked about how 70% of customers are deeply concerned about climate change, but only 3% are prepared to pay for it. I wonder what that means for, for pricing at IKEA. What's your assessment of how pricing will have to adjust or not as a result of your greener ambitions? That's right. We ran a big uh, survey around 32 countries. More than 30,000 people took part. And as you say, there was a big gap in between people that were worried about climate and people that were taking action. And those who were not taking action, we asked them why. And the biggest two reasons was A, I don't know how to, B, it's too expensive. That's why IKEA can play a, a big role in really making uh, sustainability affordable for the many people, because sustainability cannot be a luxury for the few. It has to be affordable for the many. And the, we have many examples. Like, uh, we decided LED bulbs, for example, it's now one euro in IKEA rent. Used to be nine euros five years ago. These are a small example where we can really accelerate the sustainability for the many people. Yeah, you talk about how you can make it more affordable, and that makes sense compared to some of your competitors. But you still suffer from the raw materials price surges we've seen this year, the supply chain issues, the rising labor costs. I'm curious about your perspective on inflation. How much are your prices going to change next year, separate from your argument that you might be competitive, competitive compared to others in your sector? Yeah, I think uh, let's just start by saying that um, 
over the last year, IKEA has absorbed a, a, a big pressure in the cost. Yeah? Uh, and on top of that, we decided also to support the workers, uh, uh, tenants, and also suppliers and communities. So we have made already a big effort over the last uh, year. And then, of course, we are not immune to the current uh, context, and I cannot rule out by changes in the future. And we, we need to see when the situation has to come. But today, our focus is really in making uh, IKEA more affordable for the men, because this is the DNA of the company, to be always offering the lowest possible price in the market. And this is exactly the agenda we are having right now, to really go against the flow uh, and, and make the impossible possible. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see whether, if you can make the impossible possible, Juventio. Uh, with the Omicron variant in mind, I wonder what your thinking is around the need for further lockdowns. And indeed, in parts of Europe, there are lockdowns in place already, certainly in, in Austria, and perhaps that will be expanded through the winter. What kind of impact would lockdowns have on your business today as compared to the early lockdowns, Juventio? Is, are there sort of diminishing effects from these lockdowns? We see effectively uh, <clears throat> more limitation and restriction all of it. The important thing is that in IKEA, we started the digital transformation before the pandemic, and we have even accelerated all the investments around digital transformation in the last three years. That's why online uh, share grew by 75% and is today 30% of the total sales of, uh, uh, of income. So in that context, customers are really uh, uh, getting better access to us with more omnichannel capabilities. Services like click and collect, or click and deliver, or remote selling where customers can plan. We can support customers via Zoom or via Teams that we are doing now. Uh, has improved a lot over the last uh, two, three years. So in case of further restrictions, I think IKEA has developed already the capabilities. And let's uh, also remember that this is a time when life at home is more important than ever in the way you work mm. at home, in the way you uh, cook, in the way you uh, organize your living. So IKEA is even more relevant in, in when restrictions are happening.